Hello, everyone. Join me on a journey to get to the bottom of the digital divide as we explore the detrimental effects of the unequal access to technology and discover actionable solutions for achieving digital equity. Growing up in rural southern West Virginia, I have firsthand experience with the digital divide, which is the unequal access to technology that leaves many people behind. West Virginia ranks 50th among states in Broadband Now's annual rankings of coverage, speed, and reliability. This lack of access disadvantages individuals in education, healthcare, and job opportunities. Equity is the idea that different people need different things to succeed. And digital equi equity is a bold vision where the digital divide has been closed and everyone has what they need to participate and thrive in the digital world. As a neurodivergent, first-generation college student, I am driven by my passion for closing the digital divide and ensuring everyone has an equal opportunity to success regardless of their background. My journey through the digital divide started in 4-H in college. As a graduate assistant, I worked with WVU 4-H's youth development. 4-H is America's largest youth organization and is ran by land-grant universities like WVU. 4-H uses the experiential learning method, best defined by their motto, learn by doing. And this method is critical in after-school programs, especially when the goal is to teach computer science without any computers and using facilitators that have no computer science background, which is exactly what I worked to do as a graduate assistant. As I started my position, the 4-H STEM team at WVU was awarded a Google grant to incorporate virtual reality into after-school programs. WVU's motto is Mountaineers Go First, and that inspired us to blaze a trail and develop multiple curriculum resources which were implemented in after-school programs nationwide. Thanks to the success of the VR curriculum, WVU was selected to develop the curriculum for the first ever computer science-themed National Youth Science Day experiment in 2018 which Google sponsored. As one of the four people from the design team from WVU, I got to work alongside software engineers and curriculum specialists from Google and develop an experiment kit that addressed some of the key barriers to entry in computer science education. Our inspiration for the 2018 NYSD report was a report published by Google and Gallup in 2015 about the state of computer science education in K-12 schools. Some of the key findings were black and Hispanic students were less likely than white students to use a computer at home most days. Girls were less likely to boys to say that they'd learned any computer science. Parents from small towns and rural districts were less likely to be aware of opportunities to learn computer science in the community outside of school and there was disparity between demand and supply for computer science education. One of the activities in the kit, Code Your Dance, exemplifies the techniques we implemented to overcome these barriers. It is an unplugged activity, which means that it teaches computer science concepts like abstraction, decomposition, and algorithms without requiring any computer hardware. Code Your Dance does this by teaching students to code their own line dance with a programming language designed on playing cards. The goal is to demystify these computer science concepts by linking them to something the students are familiar with. Line dancing is actually incredibly popular in 4-H. The creation of this activity is my favorite, tell me about a time you disagreed with a coworker story. A software engineer from Google and I took the lead on designing the programming language cards, and we had some creative differences on what constituted oversimplification. It turns out the definition of oversimplification is actually pretty complex. After debating back and forth across time zones for what felt like forever, we finally set up a call and were able to reach a compromise. It was hard to see it at the time, but in retrospect, our compromise was better than either of us could have produced on our own. And the experience taught me that inclusion and discussion yield better results. Code Your Dance was the most popular activity in the kit, and 86% of survey respondents reported that they tried it, 
and 81% of survey respondents reported that they would likely or definitely do it again. One criticism we received was that the activity could have been more friendly to participants with limited mobility. Even though we worked so hard to create an experiment that taught computer science without computers, I was disappointed that we were unable to include everyone and disappointed in myself for not thinking of this. And that's what inspired me to dig deeper into the digital divide into the realm of inclusion. In 2019, WVU was selected again to create the 2019 NYSD experiment. And I became a visiting faculty member at WVU. This time, we focused on inclusion, including alternate versions of activities, representative stories about diverse 4-Hers using computer science in their communities, and focusing on how computer science can help you, regardless of your career path. I got to see the firsthand effects of this when I demoed the experiment at the Monongalia County Technical Education Center's Practical Assessment Exploration System Lab. The PAES lab allows students on the autism spectrum to develop their functional work skills. Although these students may not be college bound, the curriculum for NYSD was flexible enough that they were able to see how computational thinking and computer science can be useful to them regardless of what occupation they pursue. On February 28, 2019, Senate Bill 267 was signed in Beckley, which is my hometown, at Cranberry Prosperity Elementary School, where I spent many hours volunteering growing up. This law made West Virginia the first, nation, or the first state in the nation to require computer science education before graduation. This event felt like a capstone to my work. And when I finished my work on the 2019 NYSD experiment in late 2019, I decided to dig deeper once again and pursue a new passion. In January 2020, I accepted a position as a professional technologist with WVU Extension. A professional technologist is someone who finds, creates, and implements technology solutions to diverse problems. And being neurodivergent, I became particularly interested in a specific type of inclusion accessibility, which is making accommodations so that people with disabilities can participate. And I started to specialize in digital accessibility. While much of accessibility focuses on making specific accommodations for individuals, digital accessibility is a little different. Because with digital content, the intended audience is often the entire world. And so those case-by-case -case accommodations aren't possible. The goal of digital accessibility is to create the content in such a way that the most people possible can consume the content. And this is a place where everyone can make a difference and make your own life easier in the process. The Web Content Accessibility Guidelines is a set of technical standards developed by the World Wide Web Consortium to guide developers in creating digital content that is accessible to a wide range of users. These criteria cover areas such as color, contrast ratios, content structures, alternative text for images, keyboard accessibility, and more. And by following these guidelines, content creators and developers can ensure that their digital content is accessible to users with a wide range of abilities. Universal design is the idea that these accessible practices are often universal best practices. This means designing products and environments with accessibility in mind from the beginning, rather than adding these features as an afterthought. And by doing so, universal design not only benefits people with disabilities, but also benefits everyone else. A classic example of this in architecture is that a ramp may be added to a sidewalk to accommodate someone with a wheelchair, but it benefits a wide range of people, from parents with a stroller to delivery workers with a cart. And an example in the digital space is closed captions, which may be added to a video to accommodate a deaf viewer, but they benefit many others as well, such as someone trying to watch the video at a crowded airport without headphones. Developers at large technology companies like Microsoft and Google bake universal design into their products. And by using these tools, you can make your own life easier. For example, by using proper headings and word processing tools, you can do things like navigate your document and insert a table of contents with just a few clicks. 
Most office application suites, such as Google Workspace and Microsoft 365, come with built-in accessibility checkers that will scan your document for conformance to the WCAG guidelines and give you helpful tips along the way. In 2020, right as I was settling into my new role, the pandemic hit, and all of Extension's programming had to be digitized overnight. As a professional technologist, this meant a lot of late nights and hard work. And while most of this is kind of a blur now, one particular instance stands out in my memory. WVU 4-H Code Camp is a camp I co-founded with other WVU 4-H NYSD design team members. Originally, it was designed to focus test various activities that we were testing for NYSD, but the camp took on a life of its own and is still going to this day. From 2018 to 2020, it was a weekend-long in-person camp where middle and high school students from across the state gathered and were introduced to computer science concepts. In 2021, however, the camp had to be digitized. While this had drawbacks, one positive experience was partnering with the West Virginia School for the Deaf and Blind to bring computer science education to their students through Code Camp. By making only slight modifications to an existing curriculum, we were able to help a blind student write his first Python script and discover a love of computer science. That is digital equity. The pandemic brought many issues to light. In 2020, Google and Gallup released a follow-up to their 2015 study, and the results were, were grim. The significant gender gap that had existed in computer science education still persists to this day. There are similar computer science education gaps between white and black and Hispanic students. And while more state-level computer science decision makers believe that computer science is important, that hasn't translated to the classroom quite yet. Students are generally unconvinced that computer science is important for them to learn. My personal findings were that two issues stood in the way of my digital equity efforts to date, the skills gap and the lack of physical access. Once again, I found myself digging deeper into the digital divide. The skills gap is the higher demand for technology skills than the supply. And as the di director of Data Driven West Virginia, an outreach center at the WVU John Chambers College of Business and Economics, I work alongside many talented colleagues to bridge this gap using many tools I learned along the way, such as experiential learning and digital accessibility. We take experiential learning one step further by having our students, or experiential learners as I like to call them, learn by solving real world problems that advance the prosperity and economic health of West Virginia and its people. Data Driven West Virginia partners WVU students with organizations that have a technology need or who share our goal of bridging the digital divide. We've worked with organizations as small as a local art boutique to as big as a national R&D nonprofit tackling issues like the opioid epidemic. One project I'm particularly proud of is ongoing with the West Virginia Office of Broadband. Data Driven West Virginia is working alongside colleagues from other WVU programs, such as Startup West Virginia and the West Virginia Land Use and Sustainability Law Clinic, as well as experts from Marshall University and Tilson Technology Management, and with support from the West Virginia Governor's Office, to advise the West Virginia Office of Broadband on the implementation of two federal programs, the Broadband Equity Access and Deployment Program and the Digital Equity Program. These two programs offer unparalleled federal funding to address the digital divide by expanding broadband infrastructure and promoting meaningful adoption and use of high-speed internet service. These programs work synergistically to maximize their collective impact. Coordinated efforts allow both programs to benefit from common data collection, identifying greatest areas of need, and making data-driven decisions. By fostering innovation and evaluating the impact of their initiatives, BEAT and DE can continuously refine their strategies, and together these programs create a holistic and effective approach to addressing many facets of the digital divide. These programs are just a start, however. Although the title of this talk may suggest otherwise, getting to the bottom of the digital divide is not possible because you can't dig yourself out of a hole. Throughout my career, I've worked with talented and passionate individuals from different backgrounds to bridge the divide. And while building a bridge is crucial, 
It is not the ultimate solution. We still need to tackle the root causes of the digital divide. The reality of bridging the divide is that this is only a first step towards digital equity. Bridges require constant maintenance and they have limited throughput. Bridging the divide provides access to those currently excluded from the digital age. However, to truly achieve digital equity, we need to feel the divide by permanently fixing the systemic issues that are at its core. Achieving digital equity requires a collaborative effort from different stakeholders, including governments, businesses, nonprofits, and individuals. Moreover, it requires representation from all races, genders, socioeconomic and ability groups, and all walks of life. Each group brings unique skills and perspectives to the table, and by working together, we can make a significant difference. While, project, while progress has been made, we need to accelerate our efforts, and therefore I urge you to join us in this mission. Whether you're a technologist, educator, policymaker, or concerned citizen, there is a role for you to play in filling the digital divide. Let's collaborate to create a world where everyone has equal access to the opportunities of the digital age. I encourage you to find your digital equity passion, grab a shovel, help us start filling. Thank you.